Today we talk about the future of Optic and why I think they might be struggling in the future. Welcome back guys. Hope you're all doing well guys. Welcome back to another episode of CSK News. Of course, by the title guys, a lot of today's episode focused around the weekend recap. Of course, Optic Gaming making huge changes this past weekend. We're going to talk about the Stannis Law situation and Config and of course the whole organizational situation over there within Optic where apparently some big problems. When they did make roster changes, they removed of course Shazam and Stannis Law. They've been subsequently signed by to Complexity. Of course, replacing FNS over there. Stannis Law will be their IGL and Shazam will be their opera. So it's really good to see these guys still sign the North American scene and a team like Complexity who's actually fighting for relevant matches for Pro League next season. If they do manage to qualify for that, they have a really good future. So uh, really good to see that kind of stuff, but not really so good to see the conflict that happened with Inside Optics. So if you guys have not seen this past weekend, we had some deleted tweets from Config we'll talk about later on. And of course, Stanislaw's response we're going to talk about right now, guys, about why they were actually kicked. I'll show you guys a tweet longer on screen and of course touch on the main point so far, starting from the beginning to the very end, and why I think Optic is going to have some very big issues coming forward. And so Stanislaw, I know there's a lot of takes out there. I'll link Thorne's video down below. He goes on for an hour and a half about the whole situation, you know, how professionally you should actually handle these kind of situations. When you get kicked or removed from an organization, should you be making these kind of posts? My own opinion, guys, is I love being transparent. I love players who are transparent. Of course, this could have been, could have been done better ways on both sides, I'm sure, by Optic Gaming standards and their upper management, the way they handle the situation, as well as with Stannis Law and how transparent he really was. Maybe some things he shouldn't have said. But anyway, hopping into it, guys, from start to finish, of course, we have Stannis Law's first initial issues when they joined Optic, and that was apparently with punctuality, with config, punctuality meaning being on time to a, a maybe practice or events or whatever they were meetups they had to going on so punctuality with config as well as attitude problem with Gade so I never really heard, heard about issues like this apparently Gade continually throughout this whole time these few months actually had a big attitude problems and that was actually touched on later on as well we move on then apparently guys the Danish members were actually spending a lot of time speaking Danish and not English and a lot of the team meetings were actually held where the the Danish half of the team was speaking Danish speaking out their problems in Danish and it left the other half of the team that being the coach I'm a pet as well as of course Shazam and Sam Law kind of in an awkward tension where they couldn't understand the problems that were going on and the Danish ex-North members were choosing to speak in Danish and of course they knew very well they couldn't speak the other members could not understand them as well and apparently at times they refused to speak in English and eventually Cajun B said if we have a problem we will tell you in English and eventually we go on later down the timeline apparently Stanislaw tells us that Cajun B and Config both had an offer with a different team this offer did apparently fall through and Gade was not a part of that offer but of course it did fall through so of course and again you guys can imagine if you're part of a team Team, and they did come out and tell Stanislaw and Shazam, which again, it's great transparency to tell your teammates, hey, we have an offer on the table. But you can imagine how checked out you might be as a team if you know that half of your team is thinking about leaving or was going to leave until the offer did fall through. So that's a big mental stake there as well. On, on top of that, of course, leading another thing out there, guys. Apparently, the entire team at one point had agreed to replace Gade. This was actually going in. Stanislaw said the entire team, including the coach, I'm a pet, as well as uh, Cajun B and Config, Stanislaw and Shazam, the entire team had agreed to actually to remove Gade because apparently he was not keeping up to par with other players in the team. But going into this as well, apparently the other North members, Cajun B and Config, backed out of that option. They actually then, of course, told uh, Shazam apparently it was going to be Shazam who was going to be replaced. Stanislaw found out about this. And so a lot of things going back and forth, guys. The team not really being sure. Cajun B and Config not sure if they were going to leave. Stanislaw not really sure who the North members want to kick. Do they want to kick Gade? Do they want to kick Shazam? Not really sure at this point. And so you can imagine right now the confusion is immense. And of course, it comes down to the problem we skipped to the very end of the story, guys, where apparently it came down to the fact that, he, uh, of course, Stanislaw felt like the owner, Jacob um, from Infinite, actually thought that he, he wanted to make the team a Danish team majority. So a Danish majority team, if not, of course, a full European roster, and they succumbed to the pressure, and eventually, we've seen this way too many times in the past few months, and again, probably the past year of CSGO. Of course, with all the leakers out there, it's more common more now than ever. Uh, we actually heard from Stanislaw that apparently Stanislaw and Shazam knew about their kick, knew about their replacements, Yugi and Snappy from Team heroic before the team even told them before their teammates told them and before even more importantly before their coaches and of course their upper management because the coach was replaced as well I'm a pet was also replaced and handed his his resignation but of course they heard it not from their teammates not from upper management who should be the people to tell them but from a news article that was actually leaked itself and I cannot imagine finding out your job has been taken away from a news article and having to confront your teammates and have them be like oh yeah sorry and then of course there's other tension in the team and again we're gonna skip past this story very soon here guys but again 
apparently, uh, reportedly, uh, by Stanislaw, they were going to be replacing Shazam with maybe Alu or Freiburg. That was the initial intention. Of course, now it's going to be uh, Yugi from Team Heroic along with Snappy to replace both the North American players, as well as I'm a pet. He's going to search for a job in North America, Brazil, or Europe for a coaching role. But on top of that, we then bounce to the deleted tweets from Config, and this is where I'm really worried for the future of Counter-Strike when it comes for Optic Gaming. Of course, you're choosing a star player in Config, not going to doubt his, this guy's ability, a very, very good player, arguably the best player in Optic, and best player they've seen for quite some time now, uh, ever since his transition to the team itself. But he's definitely had some attitude issues in the past. And is he joining the ranks of FNX, K and G? Is he joining the ranks of people like Simple who had their previous rages? And of course, Simple has gotten much better with that and made progress. FNX and K and G, not so much. But remember the event, actually, I think it was against G2 in North. They were on the stage going back and forth with each other. Uh, I think we kind of have all the same uh, opinion about this. Is uh, the they are really arrogant uh, in their attitude and we just don't like that because in my opinion the esports is like a big family you know where everyone is chilling together outside the game having fun you can talk with everyone and just inside the game you know it's your enemies you know but you still have a huge respect for them and stuff like this and they are not really like this and I don't know why but it's sad but how are you feeling playing against this partisan crowd? We don't give a flying fuck if you cheer for G2. And we're gonna crush them and show who's the best in the world. And Config was the leader, the leader of one of those one of those main arguments there. We've seen toxicity in the past, and especially when he has tweets out there like this, of course, saying it's an upgrade when complexity adds Shazam and Stannis Law. These guys actually get signed after being ruthfully clicked from the team, and they get signed to complexity very luckily. And of course, the timing there with complexity losing FNS, they need two other players to of course do those EPL relegation matches, and they picked up Stannis Law and Shazam, two great pickups for the team, and complexity definitely searching to be a top five North American team. And this guy has the balls to tweet out upgrade and of course goes on to say uh, other things as well on Twitter that were future deleted as well. I just am very worried why Optic, in, in terms of communication as well. Now I'm not going to blame Hector if you guys know Hector, the former owner of Optic. It seems that he's not really in touch with the players anymore when it comes to the hiring and firing of players. So I do blame the upper management though and of course not being transparent, communicating with their players. You can imagine how hard it would be for, or maybe you can't even imagine, I certainly probably can't. Uh, having, a, having a certified job and understanding you read an article out of nowhere one day, you're, you're searching the Reddits or the Forums, and all of a sudden it says you're being kicked and you have not yet been told and apparently they're going to go for a full European roster instead of what they told you previously that you could actually change some players and maybe go a majority North American roster. It turns out you're getting kicked. So that's the whole optic situation guys. Comment down below what you think. I, for one, have we know from, from past experience with these toxic players, which Config seems to be becoming, we know that teams seemingly fall apart around them. FNX, a good example. KNG, a great example. Simple, you know, still a star player, but his team somehow never work out. I'm not sure that's attached to his emotion or his, of course, his stability in terms of rage. But still, we've seen this in the past, guys. People who are toxic generally don't have a future in CSGO. Does Config... We're going to find out. And speaking more of Optic Gaming, and of course also Simple out there, we'll touch on Navi in a second here, guys. Apparently Optic Gaming signed their new CSGO streamer, going to be Pterodactyl. If you guys remember, she was actually removed from Dignitas' stream team just about a couple weeks ago. She has now been signed by Optic Gaming, and she was a new content creator for the CSGO side, so that's also great to see. You know, good job, Optic, after that lack of communication. At least she's been signed again. On top of that as well, though, also important news, we've seen this kind of overwhelming problem in the past year or so when it comes to visas. Of course, we touched on this last episode as well. We had Exotic from Team Splice, which we'll touch on in a second here as well. Exotic did not have his visa issues figured out for relegation matches. It seems as of right now, I guess I'll update you guys right now as well, Splice has officially announced their leave from CSGO. They have actually confirmed their spot in ESL Pro League relegation matches for Season 8 next season, and they will actually compete against teams. I think it's going to be the loser of E United and Swole Patrol. Also, Torqued is going to be there, and one other team as well. They're going to compete against those teams, and the top two teams there will actually get a spot in ESL Pro League Season 8. So, of course, this Splice roster can continue and actually try and qualify by themselves, but apparently Splice will be withdrawing from CSGO because of, of course, this relegation match and, of course, money being a huge issue there. Now, on top of that, though, bouncing on other visa issues, we do seemingly have some bigger ones coming for IEM Sydney, that involving Team Space Soldiers and, of course, Na'Vi. Most of their players not being able to actually get those visas acquired in time, and they will be actually be replaced by several teams there as well. So, some very unfortunate stuff, and, of course, I, I meant to previously mention as well, we had uh, Steel tweet out about visa issues being a thing for players. When players join a professional team, they need to try and get visas A 
ASAP because of course there's a very strenuous process. It might take some time for a player to acquire that visa, but once you do have it, they last usually from 10 to 15 years for a very long period of time. So it's very beneficial. So once you join an organization, if you're a player out there, get the visa issue handled. Uh, obviously, as of right now, many teams having Australian visa issues was not really expected. But of course, when it comes to American visas, that's where we see a lot of problems when it comes to people like Exotic. So Splice is leaving CSGO, guys. Players still having huge visa issues. And IEM City just got a little bit worse because Navi and Space Soldiers will not be in attendance. And that's going to do it for today's episode. Thank you all for watching, all of you guys, and seemingly one, one girl viewer. Thank you all very much for watching. Please leave a comment down below what your favorite story was. I will see you guys in a couple days. And also today was out of nowhere a double upload. So I hope you guys all enjoyed. I certainly did. And uh, some quick real life updates. I actually have five days left of school before I graduate. So, frick.